So, in about a month, we'll finally see what AMD has been teasing for almost a year. Last June was the first time we saw the company showcase their 3D vCache technology. Back then, it was on a 5900X locked at 4GHz, and when they compared both the chip with and the one without 3D vCache, AMD said that a performance boost of about 15% was added with the 3D chip. Fast forward to CES, and there's no mention of the 5900X with 3D vCache. Instead, it was the 5800X that got the stacked chip treatment. But is it too late? for this chip? Well, that's what we're discussing on your boot sequence. Let's jump right into it. In terms of gaming performance, AMD put their new 5800X3D against their own 5900X and a 12900K. Now the 5900X is already faster than the original non-3D 5800X in gaming. Not by much, but still a couple of percent faster. In AMD's charts, the 5800X3D was on average 15% faster at 1080p gaming. So way faster than its predecessor. If we look at the 12900 k comparison, the 5800X3D wins some and ties some. I'm sure it loses some, but we'll have to wait for reviews to see how it actually fares. Anyways, with the information at hand, we can guesstimate that the 5800X3D is the fastest gaming processor in town. But what if you're not just gaming? I mean, I sure am not just gaming, and everyone that I know who needs a powerful CPU has at some point tried something else that was CPU intensive, like recording or streaming gameplay at higher quality settings than the GPU can offer, 3D modeling, game creation, video editing, or even music production. All of those need a pretty strong CPU. So does the 5800X3D measure up with the new stacked cache? Honestly, not really, or at least not in the price to performance ratio. In fact, even in gaming, it's arguable that it's not the best choice, at least in my opinion. So let's break it down real quick. First, the leaks. We got our first benchmark for the 5800X3D in a heavy compute scenario. Geekbench 5, and in the multi-core score, the 5800X3D was 9% faster than the 5800X, scoring 11,250 points. Impressive. But then, you look at the single core score, and the clock speeds difference comes up. The old 5800X is actually faster than the 3D vCache model by 2.3%. Not by much, but it's still relevant. Plus, if you're a savvy computer enthusiast, you can add overclocking into the mix. You can use Precision Boost Overdrive with the 5800X, which is just the flip of a switch in Ryzen Master, and that gives you some pretty good boosts. Look at these charts from Tom's Hardware, for example. PBO really works its magic in both productivity and in gaming. Now, it's not 15% worth of performance boost, but it's still enough to move it up a couple of spots in these rankings. On the other hand, the 5800X3D was confirmed to not support overclocking by official means. There's a chance that third-party tools might allow you to overclock it, but A, there's a reason why AMD won't let you do this officially, they probably tested it and didn't have much luck, and B, it's going to be way more time-consuming to test stability compared to just flipping the PBO switch. And then of course, to put the final nail in the coffin, there's the price. At $449, it's kind of overly expensive if you ask me. The old 5800X has dropped to as low as $330, and the current price hovers around $340. That's around 35% more expensive for the 5800X3D, while obviously not having a 35% boost in performance. Not just that, but at 449 or lower, you can find a 5900X right now, and that would be a better all-arounder CPU. It still has a lower amount of L3 cache than the 5800X3D, but it still has a whopping 64 megabytes of it, so 66% of the 5800X3D's total cache. Plus, the extra four cores at higher clocks will smoke the X3D in productivity. Then you have to consider that there's another player in the game, Intel. If you're just playing 1080p games, then the 12600K is a great option since it beats the 5800X and you're in at a little over $275 for the CPU. 
that's $175 saved. And if you're more of a productivity person, the 12700K is also there at $360. It's still a good chunk of money saved. And before you mentioned the price of DDR5 for Alder Lake, well, you can go DDR4. I did the comparison and nowadays it's not that different in terms of pricing for an Intel and AMD system. That's, well, unless you decide to go for a sub 100 B550 board for AMD, but then you have to consider the amount saved for a 12600K versus a 5800 and then that's exactly what I mean when I say that the 5800X3D will probably not be worth it. You have so much choice right now in terms of price to performance. Or you can wait for the next generation, but in my opinion, the 5800X3D is old news even before it arrived. It should have come out last year. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's topic, as usual, you can click on the things when they appear on the screen, the latest video, and the subscription button. Don't forget to stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. And so I flacked out, threads on my jacket blew out the seams So I wiped out, bruises and blues and felt like a dream Oh I struck out, you took me way past where I've gone